Um, one was you said that it was mentally challenging to win that world title, and, and more so than physically. Now you you weren't ahead uh, the whole race. I mean, you came Never from behind to win that race. <laughs> so, and, but that's kind of a strength of yours. But, so, what was the mental challenge, particularly? Because I'm interested in the psychology of swimming. So, tell me about the mental challenge. Um. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I finished ISL. Um, the first block of ISL this season was really, really rough for me. I mm. wasn't in a good mental space, and I basically was just trying to enjoy swimming because I had it in a while. And mm. then the second block, I was starting to kind of get a grasp on racing again and um, actually competing, where the first block, I, I was just trying to get through it. And um, so, yeah, then I, I things started to get a lot better. And then two days before the ISL final, I <laughs> was an idiot and I'm sure you probably saw like ISL showed all these videos of like London Roar like playing soccer by poolside <laughs> and just like you know just like hopping around like great mm. time and of course Sydney being me I was like oh my god I want to be good at this like I'm not good at it I shouldn't do land sports 100% <laughs> jumped up for a header came down on a foam roller pretty hard and mm. really wrecked my ankle <laughs> two days oh, wow. before and poor and, and Tiggy was like I don't, he didn't ask me what happened until as soon as ISL final was over, he goes, so what really happened? And I was like, it was playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, then I think I was in almost getting a grasp on everything and then that happened and it is what it is. I mean, it's just a fluke and again, it's ISL final, but I was like, I have Abu Dhabi coming up pretty quick, so mm. let's get it under wraps as much as we can. Um, and kind of from that it almost like I was in such a great mental space and that just threw me and it kind of almost put me back in the place that I was before that ISL and I was just I felt like I had no control again and um, it's something that I work a lot with a sports psychologist and I think just it's such an important part in sport that I think the psychology was so neglected for so long and now it's so much more in the forefront um and then I kind of got to I'd stayed overseas and I was in London and it was like the day before I was supposed to fly out and I called Ben and Ben was like this is a Sydney call <laughs> I was like <laughs> I was like I don't know if I can do this and so I was like I can change my flight and I can just go back to Toronto and I wasn't going to go to Worlds and mm. I just wasn't in a good mental space. I just was really, really struggling and swimming and just mentally and so many different things. And he was like, well, to be honest, you're our only breaststroker. And he was like, I know you and I know you don't want to let the girls down and you don't want us to not be able to do the relays. And I was like, and he was like, but if you need to do what's best for you, do that. But he was like, but I'm just going to play it out blank because I know you and that's just not who you are. And so he was like, if you get on that plane tomorrow, you get to Abu Dhabi, you don't have to swim, but just get here and we'll talk. And so I kind of just, it took me a while and I didn't know what I was going to really do. And then I was like, well, if I get there and don't swim, like I'll just go home like two or three days later. I don't know. And so I get there and finally talked to Ben and he was like, well, if you don't want to do your individuals, like just do the relays, like that's fine. He was like, this is not supposed to be a stressor at the end of the season. This is supposed to be probably the funnest world you could probably have and just mm. get into the best headspace. He was like, all I want you to do is figure out how to fix your mental space and just enjoy swimming. And so he's like, if that means just doing relays, if that means not swimming, if that means swimming your individuals, whichever. And so I had to make a decision, I think, the day after I had gotten there. And I was like, I don't want to pull out of the 2IM yet. I'll make that decision come. And then my other events, the 100 IM and 400 IM, it gave other people opportunities to race. And so, yeah, and then I did the relay on the first day and probably one of my fastest splits because I can't sprint to save my life, but I was swimming 50 <laughs> breaststroker. Uh, so I was like, I'm a sprinter today. And <laughs> it was an ease into the meet. And then kind of the day before Ben was like, do you still want to swim the 200 IM? And I was like, you know, yeah. And he was like, 
if you want to just send the prelims and then be done, like you have the four medley after and that'll be that. He's like, you don't have to keep swimming. And so like for me, it, it, it's hard to get on the box. And I think that was something that I was just trying to get comfortable with an ISL. And I had gotten so far and wanted to keep that progression till the end of the season. I didn't want to end the season the way that I did in ISL being so panicked and not happy. Um, yeah. And then I saw in the morning and things are okay. Like I wasn't even looking at times or splits, like nothing really made sense at that time with how this season has been. And we were just all kind of hanging on to this awkward, like only swimming three to four K with ISL and racing, not really having a block to go off of. Um, and then, yeah. And then, I mean, it worked out in my favor and <laughs> yeah, I, not that I don't know how it happened because I know how much more I'm capable of than a 204. I, I, I do know that. My coach knows that. And hopefully it'll come into play sometime. But um, I think that was the first time in a long time that I actually competed and actually raced and enjoyed what I love about swimming. And I mean, it turned out the best possible way that it could have for me. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what else Yeah, to it's say. interesting that you say competed in race because when I'm watching the race, there's a point in the race where it, you clearly make a decision like, I'm fucking winning this race kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not losing this thing. So is that does that go through your head at some point? Yeah, I think it was kind of on the second 25 of breaststroke. I was like, or I think actually the back to breaststroke turn, I was like, I'm a better breaststroker than anyone here. And I mm. just told myself that. And then on this last turn for freestyle, it's funny because as much as I love training with Summer, but I know I can beat her on a flip turn because I know mm. her walls aren't as great as mine. Right. So I was like, I'm just literally, this is what I do all the time in practice, just flip as hard as I can and try and hang on to Summer, who's one of the best freestylers in the world. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I think at that point I was like, I'm going to get my hand on the wall first. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, it, it's how I normally swim it. That, that was definitely, it's been my race strategy always. Um, but did I know what time I was going? Did I know if I was a hundred percent going to win? No, but I was like, these people are next to me and I'm going to race them. And that's what I did. 